Coming up this week on The Local Game, we reflect on a thrilling round four across the men's leagues. The WNPL continues to entertain and SA, RAA, NPL players jet off to represent their country. Plus, later in the show, I'll head down to the Flinders United's home base to chat with Lexi Denton after their great win over NTC. Plus, a whole lot more to come on this jam-packed episode of The Local Game. Welcome to The Local Game for episode six here on Channel 44 and also on Kicker Media YouTube page. And thank you for joining us once again for another week of exciting football in the local game. And what some of the results that we uh, experienced on the weekend were some exciting football. So we're looking forward to breaking it all down today. And to do so as a man who has commentated more games than I was able to watch on YouTube this weekend. It is Seb O'Neill, mate. Great to have you on board. Thank you, Johnny. Yes, I have. I've gotten around <laughs> this past weekend. It was a lot of great football to uh, to to watch on the weekend. Looking at the highlights now, some thrilling results, um, especially in the Go Sunny Solar WNPL and also the RA NPL SA. Yeah, absolutely. For me, plenty of goals to to look over. We can had a six two, a four nil, one nil, yeah. and a and a two nil from memory. And again, a couple across the league. That Friday night game between mm. Raiders and. South Adelaide, which we'll go through in a little bit. It was pretty exciting to see. It was exciting to see. We'll talk about all that later on. But uh, all eyes were on the NPL and WNPL this weekend because there was no uh, A-League football on the weekend or there was A-League women, but A-League men was on hiatus due to the international break, which saw some of our uh, RA NPL SA men's players uh, representing their country as well. Uh, we'll go into our hot topics now with... Uh, well, let's uh, look back at uh, Jared Clark um, playing for Vanuatu. A pretty um, great achievement to get another cap under his belt um, in a friendly there um, against Guinea. Yeah, great player. They played a part of the FIFA series, which is a new initiative from FIFA to get smaller countries playing against bigger countries in friendlies mm. across the world. So play them in Saudi Arabia, play against Guinea. Uh, unfortunately, lost 6-0, but Jared did start and from the looks of it had a half-decent game, but... Yeah, again, just a great experience to play against a side like Guinea, a big African country for, mm. for Vanuatu. Yep, it is. Um, it's great to see that we're starting to get more international players here. We've got uh, Marka Lilafa, um, who also is from, uh, um, he's down at uh, Northern, Northern Demons. Demons this year. Um, he was with Jared Clark last year, but he's um, one of them. And they've got some Vanuatu, but we've also got two Afghanistan players as well who were uh, selected for Afghanistan um, in just the, the upcoming uh, qualifiers. Um, one of those appearing against India, which is a new all draw for them. A great, uh, great achievement for Saeed Raza Hussani and also Omid uh, Musawi from uh, Parry Hills Knights. Yeah, Omid Musawi coming off, coming on, sorry, in the 81st minute against India for a nil-nil draw, which is a huge result against the side with the side of a legend, Indian, uh, Asian football legend, mm. Indian football legend Sunil Chetri uh, starting that day, and a nil-nil draw in a, in a group of Qatar, Kuwait, and India, as well as Afghanistan is. Huge to get a result like that. They are still bottom of the group with only one point. But yeah, nil nil draw. I'm sure Afghanistan more than happy to have that against a side like India. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a, a World Cup qualifier as well. So a big, big game there. And it's great to see some local players uh, featuring to make sure you get around all those uh, those three players. And congratulations on their international call-up. Um, I hope to see more appearances for the three of them from Parry Hills Knights and also FK Belgrade. Um, but also uh, another one topic as well, Fabian Barbieri. We know he is uh, a great player, almost about to be 40 years old, but uh, just cracked into the top five most games played for Metro Stars, cracking over 268 games. Yeah, man, almost <laughs> twice my age, I think. Um, yeah, a legend, absolute legend of the game, whether it's been at NPL level or A-League level. Great achievement to be getting to that amount of games and slowly catching up on Dan Dooley, but might have to have another season or two in him. And I think he definitely does have another season or two in him as well. Yeah, he does. I might even see Dan Godley jump back into Metro Stars. So <laughs> I feel like there's a bit of competitiveness there um, amongst him. So he might even jump back in now he's got the gloves back on. Who knows? <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, well, that was a great achievement for him. And we uh, I think he could easily crack into the top three by the end of the season, by the way it's looking. Um, good luck to him as well. And let's go into the RA NPL SA results for round four. I can't believe we're at round four already. This year is just flying by. I remember it wasn't long ago we were saying, where's the football? I want it back. Yeah, and it was, there was no excuse not to watch this weekend, as I said, with no A-League men's football, mm. international football. I'd, had no excuse to be watching any NPL Anything or else. WNPL football. And plenty of great games to watch. Yeah, well, we talk about thrillers as well. Um, they've been involved in three now. One... Um, Earlier on in the season, one in the cup, that is Raiders. 
Um, they're a team to watch this year. I think they're going to do very well. But against South Adelaide at home, um, a great uh, a great game. And uh, Stefan Matteo is really just shining this year, isn't he? He's just a very good pickup by Blado. Yeah, great signing from Adelaide Croatia Raiders, from Mobry Jets in Stefan Matteo. Had a great finish earlier on in the match to set up what was quite an amazing game against South Adelaide, who since had they've had J.J. Ryder come back, mm. had, had a bit of a resurgence, in fact. Um, but again, that that thriller, it's, it's a shame we had so many games on the Friday night that we couldn't really watch them all at once. Yeah, that was just keeping an eye on that one was exciting to watch. Um, very good game. J.J. Ryder, you're right, he's, he's doing very well since coming back. He's the, the player that makes a massive difference for um, South Adelaide. Um, and I think under him is you can, well, they're just going to do well, but if I miss him for one week, that's when they start to struggle a little bit in South Adelaide. Yeah, absolutely. He is their goal scorer. 100%. He is the man that, that leads them from the front, getting those goals, setting up those goals, not saying they're a one man team, but without JJ right out, they can be a completely different side at times. South Adelaide. Certainly mate. Uh, that is absolutely right. And, uh, well, let's look at Croydon as well. Um, very unlucky not to get a, get away with a draw. They deserved. I was at the game watching um, as a spectator. They did deserve to get something out of this game. Uh, they had their chances as well. But LA United, a strong team this weekend. They brought in, well, with the international break, they brought in a lot of the players that don't get played as much in their senior side in the A-League. So we saw, I reckon the, the starting level was pretty much an A-League side that was coming up against Croydon FC at home. Yeah, pretty much surprised they didn't bring back Craig Goodman from Saudi Arabia to <laughs> play game in the MPL. But yeah, super strong side, great strikes from Musa Torre and Johnny Yule again, yeah. two of those players who should be and are involved regularly in the A-League matchday squad having that game this Friday. I can't imagine they wouldn't be included. They do have the game the night before, which they could take part in, but I'd, I'd say those players are, uh, are far too good for MPL mm. level. They're outstanding. Well, it was great to see it, and um, I feel for Travis Dodd's side. They had their chances. They just couldn't capitalise on some of them. It's a bit of a shame that they couldn't get there, but they've got some really shining lights in that squad, which I'm looking forward to seeing how they progress as the season goes on. Um, and also, lastly, Olympic, who have uh, been the one that was going to be has been picked to be the struggling side out of all the league heading into the season. But they've kind of shown some glimpses that they might be okay and be able to do well as the season progresses. Yeah, I'll put my hands up. I'm one of the the people that probably said that Olympic will be relegated. But after that showing against Campbelltown, I don't think that I do think there's definitely hope for them. They they held off a team like Campbelltown really, really well, defended well, and just sort of those little lapses in concentration from the corner from the set piece mm. and then laid on against having a a sub like Mark Bruno is, yeah. is sometimes you can't really handle that. But yeah, again, but also a good win for Campbelltown. Yep, and as you mentioned in the broadcast, and I added a little bit extra to it, a massive blow from Mark Marino. Yes. <laughs> uh, yep. <laughs> you said the massive blow and I was in your ear saying, Max, Mark Marino. Yeah, I think I told you said something along the lines of Johnny will be somewhere. We, he was right next to us. <laughs> I was right next to you. Right next to us. But uh, what a great uh, um, a, a night out at uh, Olympic once again. Always love a good night game there and the smell is just irresistible, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, it's hard to concentrate sometimes when you've got that, especially when the, the scaffold's in front of the barbecue and you've just got it constantly wafting <laughs> wafting past you and in front of you. It's, it can be enticing at times. It is very, very enticing. But uh, that is local football. We're, we're going to discuss the state leagues very, very soon. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back right here on The Local Game. local game as we turn our attention to the state leagues and what an exciting weekend of football it was again for those leagues uh first time we've had all five leagues on at the same time this year um and a thrilling weekend it was especially in the state league one let's go to that first fulham united a team that uh, have come out of nowhere only alessio had them on, a, on his radar <laughs> But uh, I think there was a little bit of a, a radar uh, getting set, set set off when Robbie moved there. 
Um, but uh, I don't think anyone was expecting them to have a, a great start as they have. Um, and the only other team that was looking to be a very good front runner this year was Blue Eagles. Um, and they managed to uh, to beat them on the weekend. Yeah, it's it's quite incredible. I didn't actually have Blue Eagles as one of my promotion contenders from Emory, but the the strike force of Ricardo de Silva and Dante Cacciavellani has been borderline unstoppable, except for this past weekend where they where they lost to Fulham, perhaps surprisingly, but as you said, great for Fulham to get some points on the board and unfortunate for Blue Eagles run to sort of come to an end for now, but I'm sure they'll regroup mm. within the next couple of weeks. Well, Christian Borghetto getting that uh, the double to, to seal the win against them. Um, we say Ricardo de Silva is that for, uh, silver lining for any uh, any club that uh, gets him in the last couple of years. He's helped uh, cr- Raiders get up and also West Adelaide get promotion. So Blue Eagles uh, are on track to get there, but uh, Fulham United are just in the way at the moment and uh, – they're looking to do very well with themselves. I think uh, Dan Godley didn't mention that, that they want to be on the, uh, not the targets, but it looks like they're starting to to put that on themselves now. Yeah, quite a young team, except, of mm. course, minus, <laughs> minus Dan Godley. But, the yeah. average age is 32 with him in this yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, just Fulham so far doing a great job in State League 1. And I'm sure, I reckon they'll be in finals at their current rate this season. Absolutely. And, and their current goalkeeper as well with, um, cause Godley is their goalkeeping coach as well. So, um, he's doing a very good job there. The other goalkeeper. So they're doing, they're doing well. They've got very good and safe hands. Um, no matter who's in goals each week, uh, for Fulham United. And we'll also move on to the second game as well. That was, uh, that caught our eyes. Vipers getting their first, wi- uh, first point, uh, this season as well. A one, uh, a two all draw against uh, Cumberland at their, Home ground, which is Apex Football Stadium. Yeah, just caught the end of it as I was arriving for the Olympic Campbelltown game and it seemed to get quite interesting towards the end. Um, it ended out a 2-2 draw. As you said, I think from memory, Vipers came from behind, if I'm not to be mistaken. Um, and yeah, a great result for them. Another team that's probably been tipped to be going down in State League 2 this season, unfortunately for them. But especially a good side to get points against in Cumberland. Jacob Jones to get that equaliser in the 55th minute. So well done to them. Um, it was a, a great uh, great result for them. Hopefully they can turn things around at the moment there in the bottom two. But State League 2 as well. Cove and Uni continue their winning streak, doing very well in the, in the State League 2 at the moment. Four from four for the two of them. Yeah, Uni is, again, another story of, of a team that's, been there and thereabouts in the State League 2 promotion spots. The parts of the season was uh, promoted uh, I can't remember, last season or the year mm. before um, and was a part of that State League season. But mm. that result, again, important, important, absolutely important, especially in these early stages of the season against a team like that who they played against. That's Those are the sort of sides that you want to get those points off of. Certainly they are. And, uh, well, let's look at the uh, Mount Barker United Four from four, but other unfortunately on the other side of the of the things, which they're sitting comfortably on bottom with uh, no no points at all just yet. Not a great start for them, which we had a bit of promise going into this season, thinking they might do a little bit better than last year, but no signs of it just yet. Yeah, we've started a catchphrase on 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 my podcast, which is just sorry Alessio, because every time we do our predictions, it's normally negative towards Mount Barker United. Um, but yeah, I think. They've only scored one goal in their first four. Just probably their problem is, again, just unable to finish. Um, couldn't keep goals out. One of their closest games was actually uh, in the Cup when they played Cove in the first round and where they managed to score a goal in that one. So two league goals, two goals, sorry, and one league goal. But I'm sure eventually it will come. They will get points this season. It's just a matter of when and how. And uh, and they've got Seaford this weekend. So good luck to them. Uh, Seaford are doing okay. So far, one win, one draw. So we'll see how that pans out for them. They'll look to get their first point this weekend. And lastly, the Women's State League as well. Western Strikers, a new side into the WSL. Um, and they managed to get a 3-0 win over Fulham United, who are recently relegated from the WNPL last season. Um, and they just aren't doing well this year, Fulham. No, I, I would say they, they lost quite a few key players last season, of course, after finishing bottom of the WNPL and getting relegated like Angela Mills left mm. their club. She was a big player for them. Um, and I would say this year very much a rebuilding stage. And instead, I think we'll see the likes of maybe a mod, one of the Modbury sides going up. Maybe even a South Adelaide who's also been 
there and thereabouts in the past few seasons. Make sure you head out and watch some of the games this weekend of the State Leagues, or you can watch the State League 1 on FSA League's YouTube. Well, let's have a listen to some of your favourite players now and find out how they like to eat their hot cross buns ahead of Easter this weekend. Without. Nah, with. 100% with. Too, too plain without. I'm a plain guy. Oh, chocolate, Johnny. Chocolate? <laughs> <Yeah>. Chocolate. <laughs> uh, with. I like sultanas, I think. Yeah, yeah. they'll go, yeah, sultanas. You can't get a hot cross bun without sultanas. Oh, 100% with sultanas. Choc chips, yeah. Don't mind the choc chips, but uh, I'm a real simple guy. Plain does it for me. <laughs> well, they're coming out pretty early these days, aren't they? So, I don't know. <laughs> it's a tough question. <laughs> yeah, straight after Christmas, too early. I reckon maybe February. Maybe four weeks out. <laughs> it's never too early. I'd have them all year round if it was up to me. <laughs> uh, it's never too early. Um, right now, it's too early. Uh, not even thinking about it. Just getting over Christmas. Christmas time's too early. Anything after the New Year's doesn't matter. Uh, toasted with butter. Nice. Yeah, loads of butter. Toasted with butter. Microwave, cut it, put some butter. Perfect. Uh, in the microwave for about 10 seconds and then just the, the chocolate melts and yeah. <laughs> uh, toasted, I reckon. Yeah, over the grill with a bit of butter. Um, perfect. Well, that's how they like to eat their hot cross buns. How do you like to eat your hot cross buns? Well, I like mine, chocolate and, uh, oh, actually, so actually, I like them all. I can't choose. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, go into my chat with Flinders United. I'm down here at Women's Memorial Playing Field. I'm here with Lexi Denton from Flinders United. Thanks for joining me, Lexi, and congratulations on the win on the weekend. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was a pretty good win. We um, fought hard for it, so, yeah, pretty happy to come away with that. How did you guys feel, uh, NTC, coming off the, the season they had last year? How did you guys feel um, w being able to get that three uh, important three points so early on in the season? Yeah, it was, um, you know, we went into it knowing that it would be a tough game. Um, they're a good side. Um, obviously, it started off a little bit rough, a bit of a tough start for us, but we all dug deep. Um, we know we gave them a bit of a fight last season, so... Knowing we had that in us, I think, helped fire us up. So we just, yeah, went in prepared um, to do what we had to do for it. It's been, uh, last year was a great season. How are you guys feeling coming into this year after the season you had and the way it ended off with um, being able to, to maintain your spot in the WNPL? Uh, we're feeling pretty good. Um, had a good pre-season, a bit of a, you know, lots of fitness, lots of work. So we've put in a lot to get to where we are. Um, we know the work we had to do last season to get, you know, secure our spot in that. Um, so we're feeling good. Uh, the wins helped us, you know, sort of give us a bit of momentum. Hopefully we can carry that on for a few weeks, but overall pretty good. Just recently as well, the cl uh, your club got nominated for the Club Changer Award for Club of the Year Metropolitan. Uh, how excited was that for uh, yourself being part of the club and also as a player as well? Yeah, it was Oh, it was amazing. Such an honour to be nominated and, you know, then win it. Um, it just shows, you know, all the hard work that's going into the club to make sure that, you know, players and juniors and everyone have pathways and um, opportunities to push themselves and secure themselves. It's just great to see it recognised and, yeah, just on a, you know, Australia-wide. It was amazing. Such an honour to be part of, yeah. Congratulations once again and good luck in the, we got this weekend off, but uh, next, the following weekend, look forward to seeing you back out there. Yeah, great. Looking forward to going back out and carrying the momentum. So, yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for the chat. Well, we're going to head to a very short break and we'll wrap things up on here. Don't go anywhere. It's the local game.
Welcome back to the local game as we're about to wrap things up for another week. But before we do, a great game, great weekend of football and it all kicked off with a bang on Friday night in the first of a doubleheader which saw Adelaide City women kick off the Ghost Hunting Solar WNPL this weekend with a 4-0 win over Sturt Lions. You commentated that game. What were some of your highlights from it? Ali scored a goal as well. Yeah, was there with Haley. Yeah, great game against Sturt, Adelaide City. Definitely showing their class and a force to be reckoned with. I definitely, in, I definitely reckon in the WNPL this season. But Sturt still definitely showing glimpses that they can compete at WNPL level. They uh, In the first week, they only... At half time, it was only one nil the way of Adelaide Comets, which was a very decent and only conceded towards the end of that first match. And even this game, they had moments of attacking where they got forward and and certainly presented themselves with chances mm. that nearly worked out for them. Well, uh, I'll be made aware that uh, any of the Ghost Honey's older WNPL players that appears on my show go on to score a goal the following week. Nicole Blackett um, appeared on the show as an interview the, uh, that weekend, scored a goal. Ali Atkins uh, appeared on the show last week, scored a goal. So who's going to be on this week uh, that's going to score a goal? We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll have to see if it continues on. <laughs> but uh, let's go on to the other game as well. A big win for Flinders United, 2-1 over NTC. Um, that's fantastic for um, for Flinders uh, trying to uh, stay back into the uh, Go Sunny Solar WNPL this season. Um, a 2-1 win over NTC is fantastic. Huge, absolutely huge. Of course, NTC had that 1-0 win over Inter in round one. Of course, lost that grand final previously last season. But a huge, a huge result for, for Flinders United against NTC, who again looked like a, a team that could be towards the top of the WPL with the likes of Comets and City West Inter. That was a great weekend of Ghost on the Solar WNPL action. Um, absolutely loved it. This weekend, there's no... Um, WNPL, there's a break for the WNPL and WSL Cup, which finally kicks off four games this weekend. So make sure you can uh, go head out and support them, those four WSL clubs, all vying out for a, uh, a spot in the next round. We do have uh, a few more teams um, that have already gone, two teams that have already been selected um, as a buyer this week that will be in the next round. But now we find out who will make up that final 16. And... Uh, well, let's go into the this week of the round five of the RAA and NPL. Some great fixtures. It is Easter this weekend, so there's a bit of a, a mixture on the uh, on the fixtures as well, with two Thursday night games and also a four on the Saturday. So a lot of uh, a lot of football. No game on a Friday. LA United will be playing Friday night football on Good Friday. But um, one we've got to check out there is Comets chasing that five win from five against FK Belgrade. So looking forward to seeing that one. That will end the uh, round five fixtures. So could end on a bang. Absolutely. A bunch of very intriguing games this weekend, especially those two Thursday night games. A shame they're almost back to back at the exact same time, right next door to each other yeah. as well. We can uh, run between the two, get some chivaps, go back, get some chips, go back and get some chivaps. There one, you go. One gets boring. We can walk over, take all our kit over. Yeah, half Simple time, as that. go get some chivaps yep. at uh, Croatia Raiders. Um, uh, well, let's talk about quickly before we wrap things up. Um, our South Australian boys are doing great um, representing us for the uh, for the Oli Roos. Well, we got Bob Alina, who's made his debut in the semi final for the Oli Roos. They're having a successful run at the moment. Um, in the WAFF, uh, will we, the tournament over there, should this spark the question of should South Australia be hosting something uh, like a, a youth international tournament maybe? Yeah, absolutely. We had a, a year or so ago where we had the under-17s play, play in Shepparton um, and that was the tournament where you saw Nestoria and Kunda score about a billion goals <laughs> against his opponents um, and even tournaments like that, playing those at whether you play them at at Jeps Cross or Martin, even at Hindmarsh. Uh, well, you will need a few things. stadiums. So there's, we've got the, the capabilities. The World Cup, Women's World Cup showed that. Absolutely. And the training, you can use them for training too. And especially for those other teams to come here to South Australia, show what we're about and be a great experience. I think it's great. We're producing a lot of young players at the moment. Um, it's great to see a, a handful of those players coming from South Australian ranks. Um, we've got Luis Dorigo to name a few. There's a um, Hall as well. There's, it's great to see these young players doing so well um, and I look forward to seeing the future of our Oli Roos um, heading into the uh, Olympics later this year as well. Hopefully it's a smooth sailing for them. Um, it's great to see South Australians represented. Well, we can talk about 
football all day. We need to wrap things up. We're missing out on some topics. That's why I'm bringing him back. It's Antonio Spagonis from Front Page Football. Johnny, we hate seeing players go down to long-term injuries, but it's always fantastic seeing them return. It was great to see Thomas Love play his first game of the season for FK Belgrade after a long-term injury against his former side Adelaide City. And it was also fantastic to see Adelaide United's Jay Barnett finally get back on the field after nearly a year off. Oh, and I'm not done just yet, Johnny. How great was it to see local South Australian boy Cassini Yengi open his scoring account with the Socceroos? And of course, who was there to assist it other than Craig Goodwin? And Craig Goodwin himself couldn't stay away from the score sheet scoring two goals in an imposing win over Lebanon. Well, thanks again, Antonis. Uh, as you know, you can get the articles every week on frontpagefootball.net. So make sure you check those out. Great articles, great topics. Mate, thank you for joining me, Seb. That is it for this week. Yes, unfortunately, but it was great to be here. Great to spend the time with you, as it is always, Johnny. Oh, well, that's, uh, I am paid you to say that, but thank you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Have a great weekend. Head out to your football. Enjoy your Easter with your family, and we will see you next week for more action here on The Local Game.